Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look at the relatively new AOC 35 inch ultra wide 1440p gaming monitor. Now this review won't be sort of full on with numbers and graphs and stats and all things like that. I don't have the equipment to test all sort of monitors like that. It'll just purely be my thoughts. I've had this for a few weeks. I've been running quite a few games on it. Uh, really just my thoughts on how accurate I thought the color was, uh, things like the viewing angles and uh, things like that. So we'll jump in and we'll have a look. When it comes to selecting a gaming monitor, your possibilities are endless. The AOC screen we'll be checking out today fits into a small category of screens. This category being 34, 35 inch screens at 1440p at 100 hertz. Each of the big name companies have one, now so does AOC. The model we'll be checking out today is the AG352UCG, but don't get confused with the ag 352 QCX, which is identical in appearance and size, but runs at 1080p at 200 Hz. The AG352 UCG is a big screen and plenty of desk space is required, not just in width, but also in depth. I'm not sure if needed, but AOC has added this back foot on the stand, which is arched. This protrudes quite a way back from the screen, and if you push the screen back too far, it will basically fall over if this foot goes off the back of your desk. Compared to say their 40 inch 4K screen, the stand is different, which allows you to push the monitor much further back. The stand is made of a good quality aluminium with a nice silver matte coating. Facer mounting is also supported on the screen as well. And I would say overall, the stand has good adjustability. There's tilt, height adjustment from 110 to 220 millimeters, as well as swivel. There's no rotate, which I don't think is needed on the screen this size. The frame of the screen is of a high gloss and is quite bulky. Another option AOC has added is RGB. Yes, that's right, RGB. The RGB lighting comes from underneath of the screen as well as from the rear. I must admit the rear of the screen does look pretty badass, but you'll need to take this screen to LAN parties to show it off. The RGB lighting can be controlled by the on-screen display and can be set to off, green, red, or blue. The screen also has a pop-out headset holder, which is a handy feature. The screen itself comes in at 3440 by 1440 and is a 21 by 9 aspect ratio with a 2000 curvature. This model also features a 100Hz refresh rate and also features NVIDIA's G-Sync technology. The panel used is a VA panel. Response time of the screen is 4 milliseconds grey to grey and will cover gaming performance later on. The screen is coated in a light anti-glare coating which keeps reflections to a minimum. Input wise we see one DisplayPort version 1.2a and a HDMI version 1.4b. Just to note, you'll be forced to use DisplayPort if you wish to run the screen at 100Hz and use the NVIDIA G-Sync technology. There's also audio jacks and two USB 3.0 connections with one of these ports featuring fast charging capabilities. The screen also features two 2 watt speakers, but honestly, with a screen of this caliber, I bet you aren't buying it to use these speakers. After testing them, I'd say they'd pass for YouTube and that's about it. OSD is accessed via a joystick under the screen. One confusing part of this joystick is when pushing the joystick in, it will always turn the screen off, no matter what part of the menu you're in. It doesn't act as enter. Unlike my AOC 40 inch, it also has a joystick and pushing that joystick in acts as enter and long holds turns the screen off. A much better solution in my opinion. The OSD has a plethora of options, but there's no picture in picture, which isn't a great issue as that feature is more for production work. A common feature in most of these gaming screens is the overdrive mode, which is what AOC calls it. It basically boosts the pixel response if needed. When setting this option to off, weak, or light, there is very noticeable difference to the screen at all. Setting this option to medium saw some response improvement with very little overshooting. On strong, there was too much overshooting and it was quite distracting. I'd stick to medium for this setting. Gaming on the screen, I found no issues at all. Input lag was basically non-existent thanks to the G-Sync module, but having this module does add to the screen's overall cost. Pixel response was good with no noticeable issues. I tested a variety of games in the various modes and decided to leave the screen in the medium overdrive setting. Not bad for a screen of this size, as you need to remember most cheaper gaming monitors use the faster TN panel instead of IPS or VA. TN panels have much faster response but less accurate colors. On my sample, I did notice some light backlight leakage. It's hard to pick up on camera, but it's only really noticeable in very dark areas or solid black images. 
some uniformity also follow suit in the same type of footage on the screen, really nothing too major. Viewing angles weren't too bad and sitting directly in front of the screen saw no issues at all. But if you use the screen for more than just gaming, say watching movies from a distance, you'll probably notice some color shifting. I guess this is really up to you and what you'll be using the screen for. Price wise, you're looking at $1,250 for the AOC screen. Now this puts it about $200 cheaper than the Acer Predator X34. And I have to remember this screen is brand new, uh, just been released on the market, so it should drop in price over time. Now what I really would have liked to see seen was AOC release maybe a non-RGB version and try and break that uh, $1,000 Australian barrier because we haven't seen a screen of this caliber uh, do that yet. Now, uh, warranty wise, you're looking at three years from the manufacturer, which is pretty good, especially with technology th these days, uh, three years is a long time. Now, lastly, I just wanna cover the uh, PC specs if you're interested that I was running the screen and the tests on. I have been running it on my recent EVGA mod build that does run a 7700K with an EVGA Z274 to win motherboard with an EVGA 1070 video card as well. Now in spec wise, to be able to run a screen of this caliber, I would say that's probably about what you would be aiming for, a minimum for a 1070 video card. And I would say for CPU wise, minimum of a, uh, of a 7600K, or in AMD wise, you're probably looking at a 1600X. Uh, just to be able to utilize the features of this screen. You're not gonna be able to get a five-year-old PC and whatnot and just throw the screen on it and be able to uh, be able to utilize all its, all its features, especially the 100 hertz and the full resolution. But yeah, just wanted to uh, let you know that info there. But yeah, I just want to thank AOC for sending out the screen to check out. I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next video.